Where's, where's this plug in? Um, right here.
you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends Hallelujah, glory to God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As you can see, we're trying to get it all together here. Um, amen. We want to say, God bless you this morning. This is a day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad therein. And we thank God, amen, for this beautiful day that he has made. It's kind of kind of odd still looking at the, um, the cameras and uh, looking at an empty building. It's still kind of hard, so sometimes we just get a little bit mesmerized, a little bit thrown off because, you know, we don't have your lovely faces to stare at. Amen? But you're see if, you're, if you can see us, just wave. Just wave. That's it. Just wave. Wave, uh, you know, like we're at the, you know, like a queen, like a king. Come on. Wave. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll go back and see it after this, but uh, just wave. Hallelujah. And uh, um, amen. How are you doing, Amen. Pastor Lisa? I'm feeling great. Amen. I'm feeling good. Hallelujah. Yeah. Blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are blessed and highly favored. She's Glory she's of like God. a little words right now, but you Hallelujah. know, get her stirred Glory up. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What are you sensing in the atmosphere? Amen. Hallelujah. I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. What I'm sensing is just I feel a shift in the atmosphere. I'm feeling a shift in the spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. God is wanting us to shift. Hallelujah. So that we can get in position. I know a lot of us are already moving in position so we can hear what thus says the Lord because he is speaking so clearly and he wants us to be ready for what he is calling us to do. Mm. Hallelujah. We have a great commission this morning. Jesus. To do the work of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because our Savior is soon to come. Hallelujah. He is so soon to come, and we want to be ready. We want to be in position. Hallelujah. You, Don't want to sound like a broken record, but, um, you know, the, um, I think it was the Winans um, sing, song. Um, I might be a little bit off or commission or whatever. Um, can't you see the signs of the times? Hallelujah. That yes. the Lord is coming. He's soon yes, to come. Yes. And uh, I, I, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but I am. Because it is, it is um, quite evident and quite obvious that of all the things that we're seeing happening in the world, mm. and even around you, that you know definitely, definitively that it is, it is a sign of the times. And uh, yes. if, if you've been on our, our Facebook page, um, the Kingdom Builders Facebook page, um, we, we've been posting up some things about the, the signs of the times. Um, thanks to Ada that she's been just keeping up on some of the imagery there. But we thank God. That we have to, the Bible says to comfort one another with these things that God is yes. coming back yes. to come. And, mm -hmm. and we ought to comfort each other mm. with, with these things. So no need for us to get nervous. If you're nervous, that simply means that there's something happening. Something's wrong. Something is, is not right with your spirit. If you're nervous about God coming back, something is awry with your spirit. If, if, if you're in a position where you say, well, if God was to come back, return right now, to rapture up his people. I don't think I'll make it. That's a problem. Now, you're not here for me to lay hands on you, and I really don't need to. Uh, but if you've been listening to the word for the past few weeks and months and so on, um, your soul should be resonating, should be resonating in your soul, should be getting ready for the return of our King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So we comfort you with those things. And in the meantime, we not only want to comfort you, but we want to encourage you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, yes. Encourage you in the Lord. That's right. Be Hallelujah. Encouraged. Be Hallelujah. encouraged. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Even David picked himself up and said, Oh soul, why thou art so disquieted? Hope thou in the Lord. Yes. yes. Amen. Hope thou in the Lord. And, and, and I'm telling you right now that we ought to have hope in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Getting a little echo coming back here. But we ought to hope in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The scripture says, bless the Lord. Oh, my, oh soul. my soul and all that is within me. I'm going to bless his holy, his righteous name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Ooh, so what's Thank next? You, Jesus. Hallelujah. We got a wonderful psalmist today. We do have a wonderful psalmist today. <laughs> we we to actually God. have uh, one of our key leaders here. Amen. 
You know, I would sing, but I really, I can sing, but I can't sing as the others. Amen. I would need some real good music behind me to kind of, you know, <laughs> overshadow what I'm saying. Um, but we have, we most certainly have um, one of our key leaders here. She is the, um, the music director here at, at Kingdom Builders. I can't hear myself up here. Um, she's the music director um, at, uh, what, the music director at, uh, right here at Kingdom Builders. And um, we're so happy to have her here in the building Amen. with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory Hallelujah. to God. We're, we're, um, we're still working on bringing the, the, the um, worship team back and so on. Um, but nevertheless, we're going to have um, our own uh, Sister Felicia Clark come before um, you in our own way. Amen. And she's just going to greet you and, 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 and just come before you in our own way. Uh, she knows how. She's powerful now. Watch out. Watch out. Your soul is going to be blessed right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, Felicia. Come on up here. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is where we all would just clap if y'all were here. Amen. Amen. How are you, Felicia? Amen. Is your mic on? Amen. Glory Jesus. to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We, God we, bless we're everyone. Uh, uh, Felicia, I want you to know that um, we are, uh, I can speak for myself and Pastor Lisa can uh, as well, um, that we are so um, blessed to have you. Amen. Uh, use your, your gifts here at the ministry that God has given you. And um, I know for sure, I don't want to mess you up. I don't want to mess me up either. I know for sure that God has, the reason why the devil's been fighting and, and, and challenging you so much, he will challenge, he's not challenged you, the physical person, he's challenged the spiritual man. And he constantly challenges the spiritual man because he knows, he can sense, he can sniff out, like a roaring lion, he says, seeking, seeking who he may devour. He can sniff out those who God have really placed here to make a dramatic impact. I mean, we're all here to make an impact, but there are certain ones that God called and have gifted that, that when they open their mouths, that, that um, it moves spiritual atmospheres. It shifts. And I believe that you're one of those um, catalysts that will shift atmosphere with uh, the way you, you guide and the worship team and the music ministry and then how you really I, – I watch, I watch as you text your text messages to the, the worship team and so on. I was like, wow. Um, this is a person that really is getting a hold of their gifting. You know, while they have a hammer in the hand and fight, they have the word and they have their gift in Amen. their other hand. Glory Amen. And fighting with that. Amen. Amen. And we just want to tell you that KBIM, KBIM, don't we thank God for Amen. Felicia? Amen. Amen. We appreciate Amen. You, you. Ought to just, we love you. Y'all just type right now, thank God for Felicia. Come on, I'm just giving her a little time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> just so that I want you to know that we appreciate you. KBIM appreciate you. And I don't want to rush anything. Amen. Um, to show you our appreciation, amen, amen, for you and for your ministry amen. and your family too as well. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I wasn't expecting that, but thank God. I appreciate being in a house, a house that loves the word, that loves the presence of God and encourages us to use our gift. I just came this morning just to, just to worship the Lord. We serve a God of breakthrough this morning. And I want to encourage each and every one of you that he is fighting for us and he loves us. Hallelujah. Jesus, we worship you, Lord. Come on, just raise your hands. Whatever room you find yourself in, just raise your hands. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yeah. I give you glory for all you brought me through. And now I'm ready, Lord, for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. your presence is an open door once you Lord like never before your presence is an open door 
So come now, Lord, like never before. Come on, do you want them? In every season, your grace has been enough. And I'm believing the best is yet to come. The cross before me, my hope in things above. And in you, Jesus, the best is yet to come. Jesus, because your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Hallelujah. Come on, if you want his presence, I just want you to stand wherever you are and begin to prophesy to your future this morning that I serve a God of breakthrough Hallelujah. and he won't stop now. Hallelujah. Oh, because I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God, he made me a promise and it won't stop now. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God, he made me a promise and it won't stop now. Oh, I believe you promise, God. You won't stop now. Oh, somebody needs to know this morning that he loves you and he wants you to do is believe in what he has already told you and he will fulfill everything that he has promised unto you he we want you Lord like never before cause your presence is an open door so come now Lord like never before. Come on, let your faith rise this morning. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God, he made me a promise and he won't stop now. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle, my God, he made me a promise and he won't stop now. Oh, 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 oh. I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God, he made me a promise and he won't stop now. I believe you, Lord. I believe what you spoke over me, Jesus. You won't stop, God. Oh, you won't stop now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just somebody just say that. I know breakthrough is coming.
by faith I see a miracle my God he made me a promise and he won't stop now somebody needs to prophesy prophesy to your future this morning that God has given and he's made a promise and he will not stop hallelujah we worship you God we worship you we worship you come on somebody needs to grab a hold to that this morning somebody needs to know that God will allow it to happen it will break forth we serving God come on prophesy to your house this morning prophesy to your generations this morning he's so worthy Lord hallelujah Jesus hallelujah we worship you, you God Jesus. breakthrough is hallelujah. coming hallelujah breakthrough is coming sense of breakthrough breakthrough, breakthrough is coming breakthrough is coming Jesus. my God my God my God come on you got to sense the breakthrough thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah, hallelujah. come on come on come on we're moving forward Hallelujah. We're ready Jesus, for whatever God's going to do. Whatever you want to do. do, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your presence. Your presence. Come on. Come on. Sing a little bit. It's an open door. door. Yeah, yeah. My God. Woo. We want you, Lord. You, Lord. Like never before. Yeah. Do you want him like never before? Jesus, Jesus. Your presence, your presence is an open is door. An open door. Hallelujah. Can you feel his presence? So come now, Lord. Come now, Lord. Like never, never before. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. We Can you sing a little bit, a bit more of that? Your grace has been enough. Yeah. Mm. And I'm believing the, the best, best is, is yet, yet to, come. to come. Hallelujah. Hold the cross, the cross before me. Hope, I hope on things above. Hallelujah. Yeah. And in you, Jesus, the best, the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on, yeah. his presence this morning. Cause your presence is an open door. Is an open door. Woo. We want you, Lord, like never before. It's your presence, Lord God. Your presence yes, is, an, is open. an open door. Hallelujah. So come now, Lord, Lord like, never. like never before. It's another verse, right? We can declare yes. that breakthrough is breakthrough is coming now. Breakthrough is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Your breakthrough is coming. Jesus, prophesy over your family Hallelujah. this morning. Jesus. Somebody needs to tell their marriage this morning that breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough. Somebody needs to tell their children that breakthrough is coming this Hallelujah. morning. Hallelujah. It's a miracle. Somebody needs to speak in their household that breakthrough is coming Hallelujah. this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, declare it. I know no. breakthrough is coming. Come on, come on. By faith. I see a miracle, my God, he made me a promise and it won't stop now. Won't stop now, yeah, hallelujah. I know breakthrough. breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle, my God, made me a promise and it won't stop now. Yeah, hallelujah. I know breakthrough. breakthrough is coming. Come on, declare it. By faith, I, I see, see a miracle. miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, he won't stop now. Won't stop now. Oh, he won't stop now. Yeah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your presence is an open door. Thank you, Jesus. 
We want you, Lord, like never before. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to just thank God for your breakthrough. You ought to thank God for your breakthrough. Breakthrough is coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Your breakthrough is coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for your breakthrough, Lord God. Thank you for your breakthrough, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We know, we know, we know, Jesus, that there's a breakthrough coming, God. We thank you right now this morning for a breakthrough right now, Lord God, in the atmosphere. We sense a breakthrough, Lord God, in the atmosphere, that there is a breakthrough that's coming, that there's a breakthrough, Lord God, that's on the horizon in the name of Jesus. Lord God, and we thank you that you are the God of the breakthrough. You're the God, Lord Jesus, that breaks through every single barrier. You're the God, Lord God, that pierced through every single hindrance, Lord God, in our lives. And God, we thank you for you are God of miracles. And we thank you for your miracles today, Lord. Let your word today penetrate the hearts of your people, Lord God, wherever they may be. Lord God, whatever time zone they might be in, Lord God, you move from time zone to time zone. God, it doesn't matter, Lord God, whether or not somebody might be in another country in Africa, whether they're in Russia, whether they're in China, or whether they're in Antarctica. Lord God, there is no time zone that hinders you from breaking through your people, from delivering a mighty breakthrough in your people, Lord God. And God, we thank you for you are the God of the breakthrough. And nothing, Lord God, can hinder you. Not time, not man, not situations, no height, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, Lord God, can hinder, Lord God, your miracles, your breakthrough. God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the breakthrough that's on the horizon in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you today, amen, for coming, amen, and tuning in with us on this morning. We thank God for all that he has been doing, amen, and this week. I hope that you and your family are doing well on this morning. I hope this word, this message finds you well, amen. Thank God for those who are on uh, KBIM. We want to tell you that we love you and we continue to pray uh, for you, amen. We believe that these are times. Amen. Where we ought to continue to support one another. Amen. And we support you as you support us as well. Amen. Those who are here for the first time, maybe you're planning to make KBIM your home. And maybe you have already made KBIM your home online. Amen. We would just want to reach out and say to you, thank you so much. Amen. For stopping by and hearing a word. Uh, well, you know, we don't have a worship team that... Um, that you might say, well, I'm going to see how the worship team sounds. I'm going to see what the musicians sound. I'm looking to my, my right, your left, because that's where they're usually positioned. Um, you might say, well, I, until I see what and hear what they sound like, I'll make up my mind. Um, you've been hearing the word. I want you to know that we, we are at KBIM. We're not driven by amen, any entities. And amen, if we didn't have the music, if we, if we did not have the, uh, the worship team, who we love so. We will still preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. With the worship team and with the musicians and everybody else that usually take their, their places. Amen. It just makes us even more complete. Amen. I want you to know that I'm incomplete without God. And we need each other. Anybody walking around thinking that they're complete outside of God, you're fooling yourself. Amen. We are all incomplete without God. Amen. And I thank God for his completeness. Amen. The Bible says, he that begun a good work in you, a good work, he shall perform it. Hallelujah. Until the day that Jesus comes. Has he begun a 
good work in you. He that begun, Jesus has begun a good work. Hallelujah. You ought to put your hands on yourself. Hallelujah. And say, God has begun a good work in me. Hallelujah. He has begun a good work in me. And if he done that good work and he's doing that good work, he is going to complete it. Not man. Not, not, not your friends or your spouse. It doesn't matter. They can't complete you. Hallelujah. And sometimes that's what uh, man try to make you think, a man try to make us think that they complete us. I love my wife, but she doesn't complete me. Hallelujah. She's connected to me and she's uh, helped me. But God completes me. God completes me. And I thank God for his completion in me. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not, I don't dot all the I's and cross all the T's. I still have to fight as well. I have to fight my flesh. Yes, I do. I don't, you know, I'm, I might be, amen, a pastor and so on, but I got to fight my flesh. Amen. I got to, we, sometimes we got to duke it out. Yeah, sometimes me and my flesh, we get in a ring and we duke it out. And I'm telling that flesh, you're not winning today. Now, sometimes it does get the best of me. And I know sometimes uh, some people don't want to admit, you know, whoever they are, whatever status you are, uh, you don't want to admit that your flesh sometimes get a hold of you or win that battle at sometimes. But I got to admit, sometimes my flesh wins the battle sometimes. Yep, sometimes it does. But my God, thank God for those times and those days when my spirit just rises up. And no matter what my flesh may say, no matter what anybody may say, hallelujah, all that's important is my relationship with the Lord. Amen? Is your relationship important with the Lord? My relationship is important with the Lord, and I thank him, amen, for his relationship. I thank him for continuing to use me as a vessel to bring forth his word. I don't take this for granted, but I want you to know that God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. He is a good God. Amen. God bless y'all today. We've been, for the past few weeks, we've been covering and um, going through the word of God. Amen. With a, a series that we started a few weeks ago. Can you believe it's been three weeks? I tell you, Jesus is coming back real soon. It's, 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 it's uh, sometimes can't conceive how time has really elapsed. Three weeks ago, I introduced this series called WMD, Weapons of Mass Destruction. And I introduced... Amen. During that time frame, I introduced to you, amen, the, I explained what those weapons of mass destructions are in the earth. Amen. And I also, then I explained what the weapons of mass destructions are, amen, in the spiritual realm. I'm not going to talk about the earthly realm, but I'm speaking about the spiritual re realm. Those weapons of mass destructions, I covered the word. Amen. Everybody say the word. <laughs> I'm pretending somebody's here with me. I got about three folks here with me anyways. Amen. The word. Amen. The word. Amen. We cover the word. The Bible says the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the soul in asunder. Amen. To the dividing of soul and sunder. Amen. And the, and the Bible says um, uh, regarding the, the word, Bible, uh, uh, the, the Lord said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never, never fail. It will never pass. And also we covered um, prayer. That's something that's near and dear to my heart, amen, when it comes to prayer. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful, amen. We believe that prayer is one of our main weapons as well, right? We have the word, and we have prayer as our weapon. If, listen, if, if, you, if you dismiss any of those out of, out of your lives, if we dismiss any of those out of our lives, we can't live an effective life for Jesus Christ. You know, we could be f um, full of words and we can articulate things and so on, but there's nothing like having the word of God inside of us. It's nothing like having uh, and spending some time out with God in prayer. I mean, you can talk to me, we can carry conversations and have a relationship. But, but I'd rather have a relationship with someone who I know I can call on to say a prayer for me. Who I know touches heaven and pray towards their God and spend some time out in the word of God. Otherwise, all I'm going to get is fluff. Sometimes we do need somebody around us, don't we? 
who have a word. Who can, they can say a word, not an argument, but a word. They can encourage you with the word. And I thank God for the saints that encourage one another, encourage me as well with the word of God. Amen. It is powerful. It is one of our weapons. Amen. And today we're going to ask you to turn to Exodus chapter 19, 10 through 11. Amen. We're going to jump to also to Joshua chapter 3 uh, and, and, and 5. And then we're going to swing on down to Isaiah chapter 58. Amen. I got some more for you, but I'll tell you during the course of the message. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that we're soon to return. Please um, fill out the, uh, the survey that has um, been sent out. Amen. We've been sending out the survey. Please fill it out if you have not. Um, if, if you're planning on coming back, whether you are of the fold of KBIM or you are, amen, visiting us, please, if you can fill it out, that will help us so greatly. And I appreciate, amen, you all that have already done so and those who are planning to do so as well. Amen. We will need to collect that data, amen, and, and, and really um, uh, look at all the metrics by um, this coming Wednesday. So if you can do that today, uh, we'll greatly appreciate it. Amen. In Jesus' name. And, and we are planning on coming back. Amen. In-person worship, September 6th. Amen. It will be in a rotation form. Some will be here. Some would be online. And we're going to rotate that. But once you fill the, the, the survey out, we'll be able to come back to you with additional information. This is going to be exciting. Amen. Exodus chapter 19, 10 through 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, go unto the Lord and sanctify them to today and tomorrow. And let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. This is the Lord speaking unto Moses. You can only hear the Lord. The Lord is constantly speaking. But you can only hear him if you just tune in. He's constantly speaking. Joshua 3 and 5 and the Lord. And, and Joshua said unto the people. Sanctify yourselves. Tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Whew, my God. Woo. Isaiah chapter 58, 5 through including verse 8. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head as bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes upon him? Will thou call this a fast and a, an acceptable day of the Lord? It is, it is not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that he break every yoke. Well, I'm going to, my God, we're going we're gonna to deal with that. Is it not the, to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou see the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Verse 8 and final. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Thine health spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go forth before thee. The Lord, the glory of the Lord rather, shall be thy reward. In Jesus name. Amen. We thank God for, amen, reading of his word. The glory of the Lord will go before us. And I thank God for his glory that is going and has gone before us. Amen. The, the word of God and, and, uh, and prayer are very essential. And, and you've been hearing me say this over the past few weeks. And those who have been with us for many years now, um, you, you, if, if the truth were to be told, you would, you would say that that is a, a word church and that's a praying church. And uh, the, the, the word of God it becomes our very foundation. It is one of the very pillars that our church is founded upon. And also uh, prayer, one of those pillars that our church is founded upon as well. But they, they are very essential for believers to maintain our victories and to walk closer to the Lord. The word and God. You know, some people, um, they come to the Lord and they're saved and Christians Amen. And they discount reading the word and not praying. It, 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 I, I, I cannot help but telling you that prayer is a must. The word of God, reading the word of God is a must. Hearing the word of God is a must. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves walking in, in, on, on fumes 
and operating in fumes. Don't you know that when you were in the world, and we're still in the world and not of the world, but when you were unsaved, those who uh, have given their lives to Christ, when you were unsaved, the devil didn't really care much about you because we were not such a threat. The, the only prayer that we prayed before we got saved is a prayer to say, God, help me. God, bless me. Uh, 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 you know, these little prayers that we prayed before we got saved, we were praying to a God, a God that we did not know. And in our father, we heard of him, but we, we were praying to a God that we had no relationship with. And that did not shake the foundations of hell and the devil at all because we had no relationship with a God. The enemy's looking at us saying they are talking to a God that they don't know. They don't have no relationship and we don't have to worry about them because it's not, it's not destructive to what we're going to do. But as soon as we swung over to the kingdom, as soon as we say, Abba, Father, Lord, I, I accept you in our lives. Here comes a threat. Now we have become a threat. Now your prayer that you pray is a threat. Because now you're praying to a God that you know. And a God you can't see, but you know that he's there. Now you're applying faith. Uh, and now you're believing and trusting in a God that says he will provide for us. And he'll fight our battles for us. Oh, you are a threat to the kingdom of the darkness. And that's why we need to take on and use these weapons of destruction. The destruction is, the, is to destroy the enemies and to destroy the flesh and to destroy those things that comes against the children of God. So now when we read the word, Hallelujah. I don't know if you can remember when you, if you had ever read the Bible when before you were, you were saved, uh, if it meant anything to you. But now, when we read the word, when we say something such as faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Hallelujah. When we read a word that says that David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. When we read a word, hallelujah, to say that God is God before us, who can be against us? We're reading it with my God, with experiential knowledge and relationship backing us up and standing behind us because we know of our God. And so we become a threat. And that's why we need to take those weapons. Paul says to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He was not talking to the unbelievers. He was talking to us believers. Take on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand. Is it possible that the reason why some of us are unable to stand is because we have not taken on the whole armor of God? Your feet shod with the preparation of a, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation. We need to take on the whole armor. We need to use our weaponry. We need to fight with our weapon. You got to fight with prayer. You got to fight with the word. Uh, we read last week or a couple weeks ago that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but it, it is mighty through God. Through the pulling down of stronghold. You can't pull strongholds down. Breaking in the flesh. Can't pull down any stronghold. Can't uh, uh, rebuke um, the enemy in your life. Can't uh, uh, heal the sick. Uh, if we're not praying. And if we're not reading the word. What do you do? When you're in that situation. And you, you don't know what scripture to call on. You have not prayed, and you don't have no relationship in prayer. I know that sometimes this is kind of hard for us to really swallow. Uh, don't turn that dial. Don't you dare turn that channel. Don't switch your Facebook channel page. Don't come off of this page. You are on the right pa page at the right time, and this is for you today. That in order for you to fight this battle, you can't fight this battle on your own. You got to fight this battle with all the, the weapon of, of mass destruction. You got to fight it with the word and fight it with prayer. 
Now these two powerful weapons of mass destructions are, are destruction rather are used in carrying out the kingdom agenda. They're not for your agenda. They're for the kingdom agenda. Uh, some of their benefits, uh, some of the ben their benefits and what they can do. Uh, the, the Bible says it's a, uh, one of the benefits is that it's a lamp unto our feet. And it's a constant light unto our path. It's uh, sharper than any two-edged sword, a benefit. Uh, with one word, uh, the, the dead with one word, the dead can get up. You speak one word and that can cause the dead to get up. Uh, spiritually and naturally, uh, the benefits I'm talking about. Uh, uh, it, one word gives you hope. Hope is uh, given through the word. Uh, and uh, where there's hopelessness, hope comes forth. Why? Because of the word. Uh, some of the benefits, uh, strongholds uh, break and, and walls come down uh, only because we have this weaponry. With one prayer, things change. With one prayer, situation shift. With one prayer, atmosphere shift. Have you ever begin to pray? Have you ever uh, really begin to get down on your knees and really pray before the Lord and call on the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and say, God, if you don't do it, then no one else can. And, and say, God, if you don't heal uh, my daughter and heal my son, God, heal my neighbor and uh, God, heal the sick in the hospital with one word of prayer. Hearts and minds are changed. Sick is healed. And with one word, heaven responds to our prayers. The word and prayer. But there is a third weapon. There's a third weapon that need, we need to use. And that, that third weapon is, is the least that gets used. Uh, people read the word at times. They'll pray at times. But this third weapon requires a lot of self-discipline. This third weapon attacks the very thing that we love so much physically. This third weapon, this weapon is powerful. It's more powerful than you ever thought when you begin to use it. And this third weapon I'm going to speak about today is fasting. That's right, I said fasting. Today I'm going to cover our third weapon, with, which is fasting. That when we together get the word, get the uh, prayer, and fasting together, it there, there, there will be an explosion. I want to talk today about the atomic power of fasting. The atomic power of fasting. We spoke about the atomic power of prayer last week and, and the word the week before. But today, we're going to cover fasting. I hope you can stay with me for the next uh, a few days or, or so. These are our weapons once again. Our weapons of mass destruction. The word, fasting, and prayer. The word, fasting, and praying. In, in all my 36 years of walking uh, and seeking the Lord, and I, yeah, I know, I know. I look 36. How can be walking with the Lord and you're 36, Pastor? Come on. Who are you kidding? Uh, yeah. Um, well, nevertheless, in all my 36 years of walking with the Lord, it's my belief and it's been all my observation. And I, 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 gotta, I, I was sharing with Pastor Ken Roy and, and, a, and a, another brother how I came out of the blocks just when I got saved 36 years ago. Um, I had a couple friends with me and we got saved together. We called on the name of Jesus filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking other tongues. I mean, we were some wild guys, but God just converted us. Amen. And I don't have time to go into the deep stories, but uh, uh, but we when we got saved, we were we went radical as much as we were radical in the world. Pastor, you radical? Yes, I was. Amen. Uh, you got to be you know you got to be careful about the quiet ones. You see, I, I was one of the radical quiet ones. How can you be radical and quiet at the same time? I, I did it. And so, and so I I when we first got saved. And we, we just locked on. We just locked on. We promised that, Lord, uh, we're not going to go seeking after women and chasing after women and all that stuff. We, matter of fact, I was telling them how I, we had a lot of um, records. Oh, Lord, I'm really dating myself now. Pastor, you're older than 36. 
I'm dating myself now. We had, we had, uh, you know, we had LPs, they call them, right? We had records, 45s, and, you know, I don't remember the big one, but, uh, amen. <laughs> we had all the records, and, uh, and we collected a lot. I mean, we collected a lot, a lot of records, and, and uh, you know, a lot of prints, too. Uh, yeah, and, and, uh, and we covered a whole lot, and we had to throw away Michael Jackson. We threw away prints. Somebody might say, Michael Jackson? No, Pastor, no, there was nothing. Listen. We wanted our souls to be right, and we, 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 we didn't care. They didn't tell us to throw it away. Uh, somehow, we, we just, we, the Lord converted us. You know how Paul was knocked down, and he was blinded on the way to Damascus? Hallelujah. We were on our way to Damascus uh, to, to get in a whole lot of trouble, and the Lord knocked us down off our hot horse, and whatever we were trying to do, thought we were Joe Cool and, and, you know, all that stuff, and didn't, my God. Didn't have a dime to rub together, uh, you know, but we're cool. But the Lord knocked us down off of our, our, our high horse and converted us, uh, my God. And we wanted to really change our lives. Uh, we took them records and we took it to the, we threw it away, all of them. We broke them. We smashed them. We made sure that we couldn't go back to them at all. And we began to just uh, seek the Lord. Nobody told us to do it. We began to seek the Lord, and the Bible says, seek him while he may be found. Where we were seeking the Lord, how were we seeking the Lord? We just, God, we felt like a shower of Meshach and Abednego, where all three of us guys started to seek the Lord. We began reading the word. Listen, if you think, ever think that I just arrived right here, sometimes you think people just arrive where they are. Somebody went through something. Somebody suffered through it and sacrificed through. I didn't just arrive, my God, in this position right now. I had to give up a whole lot of things. And we began to pray. And when all the other young people be, was running around, were running around and doing all sorts of crazy stuff, uh, they were saved too. Uh, we decided that we're going to live down at the church. We went to the church just about daily. And we began to pray. And we read our Bibles. Matter of fact, we prayed so much and, and got so deep into prayer that they thought that we were crazy. Matter of fact, they were calling us crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. we were crazy, all right? We were crazy for Jesus. And, and uh, 18 years old, and then we can... We were seeking the Lord, and, and I'm not trying to talk about myself, but I'm just trying to get to somewhere to say I have never seen uh, uh, people uh, in all my 36 years, I've never seen people take on fasting uh, uh, in all those years. They, I, don't, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the, the rigorous type of fasting that, that young people used to do. I don't see young people today, youth today, engaging in fasting. They engage in all sorts of other things. Uh, but I'm youth, who are, if you're watching right now or if you're watch, watching in the future from now, the pathway, hallelujah, to your purpose is prayer, the word, and fasting. If you ever want to accomplish anything in Christ Jesus, then you got to take on some prayer. You got to take on some fasting. Put the, the, the tablets and stuff aside and get down on your knees and spend some time in prayer. Hallelujah to your God. Uh, uh, nothing new under the sun. Uh, the youth are still the same uh, today as they were back then. But, but, but fasting is not being engaged uh, on a, uh, as a part of people's lives. And I've, I haven't seen it. And uh, when you say fast, people, they cringe because they want their food. I want my meals. I, uh, they, they cringe. But today, I, I hopefully, today I pray that I will be able to uh, uh, stir up your spirit. As to what fasting is, uh, uh, that, that fasting is not about the food, and it's, it's, it's not about missing, just missing a meal. It, that's what the devil wants you to think. It goes much deeper than that. They, uh, people have been, they, they have been programmed that, that, uh, that they need three meals a day. It, you know, tell us that they told us that you need three meals. You need breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And guess what? People actually get up in the morning, i got to have my breakfast. About noontime or one, somewhere about, I got to have my lunch. I got to have my, my dinner or supper, and I got to have my snack and all that good stuff. But throughout the course of the year, you've been feeding yourself over 1,095 meals. That's three, three meals a day times 365 days. That's about 1,095 meals that you've been 
filling your, 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 your physical body up with, but yet how many scriptures have you, have you filled yourself up with? We concentrate. You know what? We listen to them when they say eat three meals, but we don't listen when we say read three scriptures. We don't listen when we say, well, come out to prayer. We don't listen when they, we say, come on, uh, fast with us and so on. Uh, but yet they told us, the world uh, said we need those three meals. We need uh, in a given year, we need over a thousand meals in order to live. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to explain that in a moment. Uh, many uh, don't fast because they say fasting. Well, it's not for me. Uh, fa fasting is not for me, Pastor. I, I, don't, I can't do that fasting, that fasting thing. Uh, these are believers now. And uh, uh, many have misunderstood uh, what fasting is all about because they have not been taught. If you belong to uh, KBIM, we have taught fasting. We not only teach fasting, but we do fasting. And, and uh, you know, there's some people that, that left, not left the ministry, but, but visit and decide not to come back, especially around uh, October, November area when we go on a 40-day fast, you see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to lose somebody right now. Don't you go, dare go anywhere. Amen. It's good for you. We go, we, we do in the past years upon years since we've been in existence, We've been doing a 40-day fast, and when we come out of that fast, I'm telling you, I can't begin to tell you uh, the different things that God has uh, done for us individually and for the ministry. Uh, uh, some say that their illness or their sickness uh, keeps them from fasting. Well, pastor, I can't fast because um, I, I got this um, sickness or this ailment and so on. But my question to you is, oh, I'm going to just put it out there. My question to you is, to you is when you're about to go into a surgery or, or take a certain medication or whatever the case might be, if the doctor tell you to fast, if he say don't eat for 24 hours, I bet you will obey the doctor. If you're about to go into surgery and, 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 you know, and, uh, 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 or have some type of surgical procedure and the doctor say don't eat for the next eight hours, you will not eat. Why is it that we will listen to the doctor when they say fast, <laughs> but we don't listen to the, the word of God and, and don't listen to the man or woman, or woman of God and don't listen to the Lord when he says fast? Uh, it's just stick with me. I'm going somewhere. Uh, finally, uh, some believe fasting was for back then. It was for Jesus and them, you know, Jesus and them. Uh, yeah, it was Pastor Ken and them, you know, it's for them. Uh, that, that's what some excuses are. But fasting uh, disciplines the entire man. Understand this. Fasting, and I don't have the whole morning to really cover it all, but I'm going to give you as much as I can within the ne next uh, uh, 35 minutes or whatever time I got. Fasting the disciplines the entire man. If you Focus on the food, you'll never be disciplined. Uh, overall, there, there are two powerful benefits we receive from fasting. One is uh, physical health benefits. So we, we receive a physical health benefit from fasting. And also we receive the spiritual health benefits. My God, I don't know about you, but I need both. And I have received both. Uh, no, no, let me, I want to, I want to, can I just get the physical stuff out of the way? Because I'm, I'm after the spiritual, but I, I, I just want to get the physical benefits out of the way. Just, just, just quickly get them out of the way. They're important, but I want to just want to get them out of the way so I can get to uh, the meat of all of this. Uh, I'm going to give you just about eight physical benefits, but there are more. Uh, essentially, uh, the, uh, the physical benefits uh, uh, fasting is abstinence, number one, from food. From, it's abstinence from food for, uh, for some period of time. And you've heard that before, but it's, it's staying away from food. Fasting, I hear somebody say, I'm fasting from Netflix. And I'm like scratching my head. I'm, 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 I'm fasting from lying. Just stop lying. You know. Um, it, you know, that's not food. F you, you can't, you, 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 you it, it, fasting has to do with food. It ha it's the elimination of food. You can, you can stop binging on Netflix. And I'm, I'm sorry, y'all Netflix lovers. Uh, you can stop binging on all the other stuff. You can stop lying. Just ask God to help you stop lying. My God. Hallelujah. Somebody say Hallelujah. Ah, we don't want to. We don't want to be told, Hallelujah, that we as believers we lie. Oh, don't say that, Pastor. Yeah, we don't want to deal with the elephant in the room. But the fact of the matter is, 
my God, my God, we do. And fasting will help us. Uh, let me not go ahead of myself. Uh, I, I say I'm going to cover the physical first. Uh, the physical benefits, number one, fasting promotes, God, this is going to tie in, my Jesus. Fasting promotes uh, blood pressure control by reducing uh, resistance in your body. So, so fasting, when you, don't, when you fast, it reduces that insulin, that resistance in your body. That simply means that um, a diabetic can be instantly healed when they fast. And I, I know the doctor told you that you need to do X, Y, Z, but when you take on a fasting unto God, it begins to work in your body. I can't even go into it in depth as I want to. Number two thing that fasting will do for you, fasting uh, over a period of time reduces, you're ready for this, inflammation. If I were to bring uh, Pastor Lisa up, she can tell you some stories about fasting. Fasting reduces inflammation in your body. If you, if you have some type of chronic uh, uh, in inflammatory uh, condition, uh, put yourself on a fast. Mm -hmm. Discipline yourself. And I guarantee you, if you do it long enough, I guarantee you, you begin to see results in your body. Number three, uh, messing with somebody's food right now. Uh, fast and reduce the levels. You ever had your blood pressure taken and your, a blood test? Well, fasting, it will, do, it will reduce the, the bad LDL cholesterol and, and, and uh, the, the, the blood in your body, the, all that gly, gly, uh, uh, um, the, the, the sugars and all that stuff in your body. Fasting begins to reduce it by a good 20 plus percent. Let me move on. Number four, fasting improves and boosts brain functions. I don't know why, Pastor. I can't remember fast. And I was thinking about uh, something the other day, and it keep. I, I think I'm getting um, um, getting forgetfulness disease. No, no, just fast. All time, just fast. Your, 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 your. Let me tell you something. Fasting helps your cognitive uh, capacity, behavior, your your thinking capacity. It begins to sharpen it. Uh, if you ever fast, I'm telling you, I'm tell I got to watch my wife when she fasts because when she fasts, she's fast. Fast and she's fast, meaning she's quick to catch in a hold of what I'm trying to do or whatever the case might be, you know, little devious things that us husbands kind of up to. And she catches me, you know, when she goes on a fast, I got to be on a straight and narrow because those spirit of discernment start working, her mind working and everything is sharp. And I'm like, my God, I got to go on a fast myself too. So it, it, it improves your brain function. It, it, not only that, but fasting boosts your metabolism and reduces body mass. I'm being nice. It reduces body mass. Meaning, Pastor just said, thank you. It reduces your weight, all right? So if you're overweight, it reduces your weight, body mass, all right? It reduces it. So if you want to reduce weight, weight, you can, you can, my God, you can get both blessings. You can uh, get your physical blessings and your spiritual blessings uh, because when you go on a fast unto God, God begins to help you spiritually and your body begun, be, uh, begins to align itself. Uh, Lord Jesus, uh, go past the next one, Pastor, real quick. Uh, fasting can increase levels, uh, uh, what we call levels of uh, uh, human growth hormone. They call it HGH. Uh, human growth hormones, what are they used for? They're, they're used to help us to grow and, and, and um, that also help in your weight loss and the, the length of time. Uh, the longer you go, the longer you go, those hormones begin to build up and strengthen your body. Uh, so, so fasting begins to, it begins to increase those levels for you. I'm not a doctor, but I'm trying to, try, trying to help you out physically. And, 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 and eight and last, um, fasting, hell, you ready for this? Fasting delays age. Fasting extends longevity. Mm. I'm about to be 54 in about, I uh, think about um, 10 hours or so. Uh, it's not 12 years. In about 12 hours, I'm about to be five. Fasting reduce your age, your longevity. 
it, 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 it builds some elasticity in your skin and it makes your body look... Uh, why you think all those people back then was li were living so long? They live a life of fasting. I'm just giving you just an just a over, overall picture of what fasting does for you physically, uh, just in case you decide to fast. Now, uh, here are a few of the most common types of fast, and then we're going to go on. We have a full fast, uh, which it, it, a full fast, I'm going on a full fast, it involves uh, just water, y'all. Full fast, just water. So if you ever hear somebody say, I'm going on a full fast, simply means that they're just going to drink liquids. They may drink some, uh, 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 um, some drink, some, uh, I got to be careful, I'm saying drink. Somebody might trigger and say, oh, God, that's liquor. No, no, no. Uh, they might, you know, they, 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 some water or some pure juice and so on if they're going on a, a full fast. Then we have a partial fast. Partial fast where, well, you'll fast uh, here and there, and, and uh, you'll eat food here and there. And somebody might call it, well, you know, um, in in intermediate fast uh, or intermittent, rather, fasting uh, here and there, all right? Nothing wrong with that at, at, at all. Um, the Bible says that Daniel went on an intermittent fast, or rather a partial fast. Daniel, the Bible says, fast for 21 days, and he did not want to eat the king's meat, and he fasted 21 days just on, on, on natural stuff, vegetables, no meats, out of his diet, sugar, out of his diet, coffee, did I say coffee? Out of your diet, and caffeine, out of your diet. Some of us can't even get away from the coffee. And I, 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 I tell you, I'm an avid coffee drinker, at least I don't call myself one, uh, because, well, I do drink like eight ounce, maybe 16 ounces in one day, eight in the morning, eight at night, because I got to have my, um, you know, a little bit of um, snack, you know, a little bit of cake. Uh, and my wife tell me, eventually, you're going to have to stop that, honey. And I said, uh, yeah, you know, I didn't say the devil's a liar now because I know she's right. And, and uh, so I have cake and, uh, and eight ounces of coffee, yes, uh, at nighttime. I do that every single day. Uh, do the math on that one. But, but let me tell you something. Oh, uh, my God. Let me tell you something. I can stop that at any time because uh, uh, of all the time I at any time. But I, I know I've got to fix that. I'm confessing. Confession is good for the soul. Amen. And, and so we got to fast. Amen. I'm going somewhere. Y'all stay with me. Uh, we, we, we have to be honest with ourselves when we have to fast. So we have the full fast, the partial fast, the 21-day fast, and the, the long fast, and the short fast. And, and, and when we do all of this, it be disciplined body. The body, we got to start somewhere. Let me tell you something. Our bodies are used to eating. Our bodies are so used to eating that, 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 that I did a test one day. I said, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I didn't decide to fast. I'm just going to get up and do what I normally do. And before I ate, I said, you know what? I'm just going to go on a fast. Don't you know, as soon as I said that, my body started going like, what are you talking about? No, not my, my coffee. I need coffee. I, you know, I need my egg and bacon and bacon, bacon sandwich. I need my, you know, whatever you eat. I, I need my grits and whatever the case might be. Pastor, no, no, no. As soon as you decide to fast, here comes an attack. I'm telling you, the devil don't want you to fast. Flesh don't want you to fast. And when you fast, I'm telling you, when you put your plate down and you fast, your old factory opens up your, 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 your sense, uh, your sense of smell. All your five senses, six senses begin to seven senses, eight, eight. You start adding on senses because all of this begins to open up real wide. And you want me to tell you something else? You got kids at home? Go on a fast. You'll know if they're lying or not. That's right, kids. You go on a consecration, it will sharpen your discernment, and you'll know if your kids, mm, my God, let me wait, let me uh, stay away from that. Uh, uh, fasting uh, uh, does a lot to the body and to the, to the spiritual body as well. Now let's talk about the spiritual health benefits. Uh, uh, the, 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 in the verses that we read in Joshua, it tells us that fasting and consecration precede a move of God. God told Joshua, he said, uh, to bring the people down. He told Moses to bring them down and consecrate them because on the third day, it's tomorrow, August 3rd, yeah, on the third day, on the third day, I'm going to do great work. 
So before a move of God takes place, a consecration has to take place. I'm not talking about um, you, you getting a job. or I'm talking about a real move of God. Before the move of God takes place, there is something powerful that happens when the move of God takes place. But before a move takes pray, place, uh, fasting and consecration must precede it. Oftentimes, before God does any uh, does something special for his people, he calls for a period of fasting and consecration. You, you got to read it. When, when God is about to do something exponential for you and for us, he calls for a period of fasting and consecration. Fasting is not for heaven. It is for the earth. Fasting is not for God. It's for us as people. We're not fasting to move God. God wants us to fast so we can be moved. Fasting, God is already moving. God is already doing. He's already transforming. But we need to be transformed. We need to be changed. Our actions must line up with God and what God wants in our lives. Fasting don't change the mind of God. I, ch I hear people saying, I changed God's mind. No, God changed your mind. Because when you fast, your mind gets, and I, and I know, I know it can be a little bit confusing, but you can't change God's mind. What God said is, what God, he said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Fasting change us. Fasting change our minds. Fasting change our spirits. And fasting change our soul. Fasting, God told them, you go down and watch what I do. Our actions must line up with God. When we come into a perfect alignment with God, uh, it's, it's saying to God that I'm ready to do what you want me to do. Uh, God is saying, uh, I, w I have something to do with you and for you, but until you come in alignment with me, you will miss it all the time because you're out of alignment. But when we begin to fast and consecrate ourselves we become be, begin to come into alignment with God then we begin to change and we begin to transform that's what fasting does Joshua told the people he said consecrate yourselves and sometimes we look for the leader to do all the work but Joshua said you consecrate yourselves my God you got to do it for your own self. You can't, we can't uh, uh, look for others to fast for us. You got to fast for your own self. Yes, I'll fast on your behalf to, to help, but you got to fast for your own self. Consecrate your own self for tomorrow. Yahweh will do wonders among you. Got to fast for your own self. Uh, my wife, she got to fast for her own self. I'm not picking on her this morning, but... But she got to, amen, she got to fast for her own self. I fast for my own self. We together go on a fast together. We, we, there are times when we fast together. Uh, in our 34 years of being married, we came out of the blocks fasting. We fast together. How do we stay together? Because fasting, the word and prayer has become, be, be, become the glue that actually held us together. Let me tell you, movies didn't hold us together. Going out to dinner and having a good time, which is good and healthy for a marriage, that didn't keep us together. Having children didn't keep, my God, my God. Anyway, didn't keep us together. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love, my, I love you uh, young ladies, uh, my girls. Having uh, children didn't keep us together. Buying her a car or buying a vehicle or, or, or getting a cloth and, and all and jewelry and whatever the case might be didn't keep us together. You know what held us together? The very thing that people run away from. The very thing that people do not exercise. The what kept us together is that we took time out. Sometimes converted our bedroom into a, a prayer room and make and go on consecration and say nobody eating. We're not going to eat 
eat in this house. We, yeah, we made meals for the kids, uh, but we went on fasting 21 days straight. Uh, just water, still going on our jobs and still doing our daily stuff. But we realize that in order for us to get to a certain place in God, that we got to consecrate our Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want your, your marriage, uh, if you want your relationship uh, to improve, uh, if you want to get closer to God, we got to apply the discipline of fasting and praying. I remember, I remember when and she, my wife is in here today. I uh, should just call her up here to come preach fasting with me. I remember when uh, she, we went on a 14-day, rather 21-day uh, straight fast, and we were at the 19th day. Our legs are wobbling, and, 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 and the, the fatness in our body, our body's screaming, amen, and pulling everything out of our body. And we're just uh, not wasting away, but we, we're just slimming down and slimming down. And I, I remember when I looked at her, it was about the 19th day. I don't know if she remember. But I said, you want to stop now? And she looked at me. She said, no, 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 no. We come this far. We might as well just go all the way. There was only a few days left. And, and thank God we went all the way and made it through the 21. We made it through 14. We made it through a three-day fast. We made it through the 40 days with the church. We made it through different types. Uh, we made it through five-day fast. And let me tell you something. I'm still here. I'm still standing. I did not die. I'm still living. Asthma is gone. And all sorts of health issues that could have leaped upon me is gone. I stand here as a witness to tell you right now, hallelujah, that fasting works in the physical body and it works in the spiritual body. I'm here to tell you right now that the reason why I'm still standing right here is because I've deployed the weapons of mass destruction. I've deployed word. I've deployed prayer. And I've deployed fasting. And I dare somebody to make up in their mind that I'm going to turn my plate down this week. I'm going to turn my plate down for two days and three days. I'm not going to eat three meals. I'm going to eat one meal. A Somebody's not going to eat no meal. Somebody going to make up in their mind that I need a change in my life. And since I'm hearing about this fasting, that's the change that I need. I need a change physically. I need a change spiritually. And I need to change. Is Could this be the thing that you've been missing, hallelujah, to get you closer to God and to get your health a uh, uh, better and to improve uh, your relationship. Uh, oh, you got to deploy fasting. Deploy fasting. Deploy fasting. The Bible t told us in Joshua that God said, uh, I will show you wonders. I will show you wonders which would overcome all the obstacles uh, in your life. He said, I will show you wonders, Joshua. Tell them, come on down. But before they Come to me. Consecrate yourselves. Is it possible that we've been going to the Lord unprepared? That this time around the Lord wants you, before you ask him for anything, he wants you to consecrate yourselves. That he wants you to fast. Let me tell you something. You might not fast as I do, but my God, you got to fast. We all got to fast. If we want changes in our lives, we pray for miracles. Miracles will happen. But is it possible that your miracle is through fasting? Many of us want God to move on our behalf, but we refuse to do what he asks us to do. Is it possible that that's what's missing in your life? What have you been refusing and delaying? From doing, knowing that this is what God is saying. Is God, is God telling you to fast? Is he calling upon you to get close to him in prayer? Is it possible that we are ignoring his voice? No matter how much you refuse. No matter how much we procrastinate. No matter how many excuses we make. If God is pressing Listen to me. If God is pressing on you to go into some moments and days of fasting, the time is now. The time.
time is, I know it's hard even to do it by yourself, but you can get a partner in fasting too. You can, you can, you can ask your, a, a good friend, can you fast with me a couple days? Can you fast with me a day or so? Can you fast with me five days? If you're married, uh, speak it over with your spouse and say, can we, can we fast together? We need uh, to be strengthened. We need to know the direction in which we should go. Can we fast together? If God is pressing you to change your ways, to do something different, it's time for us to fast. Your actions or inactions or our actions or inactions determines the outcome. Our actions or inaction determines the outcome. Your obedience and disobedience determines the outcome as well. Meaning that if you walk in obedience, and step into the realms of fasting, my God, the outcome changes. Is it possible that God is trying to change you? He's trying to change me. And when the change happens inside of me, the outcome will be different. Is it possible that God is trying to change? My God, it is so easy to look at the other person. But if we were to just look at ourselves and say, God, change me. I, I want you to change it all up. Uh, switch it up on the devil and say, God, change me. Don't, don't pray, God, change him, change her, change them. Say, God, change me. Let a change come over me. I guarantee you if God change you, the outcome will change. Decisions will change. Your direction will change. Change me, Lord. It is when we as a people devote ourselves to fasting and consecration, our actions lines up with the Lord. Our obedience lines up. Our will comes his will, and the wrath of God is held back. Our wrath of God is held back when we begin to line up with his will. Speaking of the wrath of God, there's a story concerning Jonah and the city of Nineveh. The city of Nineveh, was they were wicked. They were vastly wicked. God sent no, uh, 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 Jonah to Nineveh, and I'm not going to talk about the story of uh, Jonah because there's a whole lot there. But he sent Jonah the prophet to Nineveh to say, go and warn those people and tell them that within 40 days, you're going to die. Your city is going to be destroyed. So Jonah went into the city, told the people. The Bible says Jonah went from street to street. You're talking about street uh, evangelism. He went from street to street. He wanted to make sure everybody knew what's coming. Everybody was aware, including the king. The Bible says that when the king of Nineveh heard what's about to happen to his city, the Bible says the king, listen now, the king put out a decree. You, you'll find it in, in, in Jonah chapter 3. The king set out a decree and said, I want everybody to fast. Turn your plates down. The Bible said the king rented his clothes and went down in sackcloth and ashes. The king. The king. It's powerful when the king can be humble. It's powerful when a, a person in leadership position can be humbled. My, my God, I'm not going to even go there. I'm not going to go there. But the Bible says the king humbled himself and caused a fast. And the Bible says that the king says that God may yet relent. And with compassion, turn his fierce anger to what we will so that we will not perish. He said, the, in other words, the king says, I don't know if this is going to do it. But we're going to take the risk and we're going to fast. Because it's highly possible that God may relent the, his ways. Listen, God was waiting for the people to change. God don't want to destroy anybody at all. It, it, it's, it's not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So it's not that God was trying to destroy them. They needed to change. We need to change. The Bible says that God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil. 
he relented and did not bring them destruction. Just imagine Sodom and Gomorrah if they had repented. Moses was, rather Abraham was there pleading for Sodom and Gomorrah. Lord, if you can find 50, that's righteous. If you can find 40, righteous. 30, righteous. 20. He went, I believe he went all the way down to 10. And God said, I cannot find not 10 righteous. Imagine if Sodom and Gomorrah had repented. Imagine if we repent. If my people call by my name. If, imagine if we repent. Are you ignoring the warnings of God? Are you turning your back and ignoring what God is saying? Imagine if we repent. Are you, are you bringing, uh, or rather, are you being stubborn? Are we being stubborn and not hearing the word of God? And being, the Bible calls some of those who are coming out of Egypt, call them stiff-necked. Are we a stiff-necked people that God is saying to fast? And God is calling for us to do some things according to his will. And we're turning our backs. Have you decided to repent and change your ways as Nineveh did? God is waiting for his people. It's fine and well enough to read all these stories and these events in the Bible. But there is a story and an event that's happening in your life right now that God wants us to change. God wants you to change. And God wants us to transform through his will. God sent no Jonah to warn the people. Is it possible that today this is a warning for you? Is it possible that today that I am as like the Jonah? That God is looking for us to change. God is looking for you to change. God is looking for his people to change through the auspices of fasting and praying. When the people of God begin to fast and consecrate themselves, things begin to change. Atmosphere begins to shift. Evil intents, intents towards you begins to change, and those who plot against you, God begins to subdue them because he will fight on your behalf. Don't you, don't you, don't you mess with a God-fearing person who's fasting and praying. Uh, and this is a warning for some people out there who are messing with the people of God that are, are, are prostrating themselves and fasting and, and praying and praying and fasting. Uh, when, you, when you see a people of God fasting and praying and consecrating themselves, you know that something is about to happen. In the book of Esther, the Bible says that Esther preached, rather Esther fasted and sent a word out to the people and said, listen, I heard that the people were about to be destroyed. And Esther sent a word out and said, listen, I want everybody to fast for three days for us because I'm going to see the king. Esther knew that if she had gone to see the king without permission, she would have been killed. But Esther made up in her minds that, listen, you all fast for me, and I'm going before the king, and if I perish, I perish. And that's the attitude that we ought to have. Uh, if I perish, I perish. All I know is that God called me to do something different. In the book uh, uh, of, of uh, Moses, Moses, rather, in, in, in Exodus, Moses began to tell the people, listen, I'm going to go up to the mountain for 40 days, and I'll be back. Moses went up to the mountain, and 40 days later, he returned. He was on a fast, but he returned with the Ten Commandments. Moses for, fast 40 days. Daniel passed 21 days. King Jehoshaphat, when he was uh, facing a massive army, the Bible says that King Jehoshaphat turned to the Lord, and the Lord commanded the people. He said, you tell the people that they should go on a fast. And he said, when you fast, then I'm going to respond. And the Bible says that the Lord responded to Jehoshaphat and the people, and the Lord said it like this. Uh, he said, do not be afraid nor be discouraged because this of this vast army. He said, for the battle is not yours, it is the Lord's. Let me tell you something. Your mind, your spirit will line up with the Lord. And we will not fight the battle on our own. Is it possible that the Lord is saying, use this weapon? 
use this weapon. The weapon of mass destruction. I fast because it this, this, this weapon destroys my flesh. Somebody might say, well, pastor, uh, 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 isn't, is, aren't you hurting your body when you fast? I say, yes, I'm hurting my body. I said, I'm bringing this flesh under subjection. That's the hurt that I'm putting on this bad body. I'm bringing this flesh under sub subjection. This weapon of mass destruction is capable of destroying bad attitudes. Keeping me in check. I got to be kept in check. Maybe, maybe some of you don't need to fast, but I need, I need to keep this thing under. I need my mind to be cleared. I need to keep, I need to stay disciplined. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 58 uh, and verse 5 through 8, we read it. Isaiah lists about nine things. He said, here's what fasting does. He said, this is a fast that has been chosen. Number one, he says, it's a day for man to afflict his soul. You got to flick this thing. It's to bow down um, his head as like bulrush. You know what a bulrush is? A bulrush is a plant that, that grows in, 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 the, uh, in, in, in water or grows out, of in, 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 out in the field somewhere. It grows up real tall and then it bends over because it's so tall. He, says it's like, it's, he said it's, it's like bulrush. Bow down like bulrush. That simply means we got to fast and humbles us. When you look at a, that bulrush of a plant, all you see is this. And but the Bible says that, that we ought to, we ought to uh, uh, fasten, rather, it's going to cause us to be humble. Number three, a uh, fasten. He says to spread sackcloth and ashes under him, he says. Meaning that we got to put off all this stuff that's on us so that the Lord can purify us. It's to loose the bands of the wicked. It's to undo heavy burdens. Have you been burdened? Fasting will un my God. It will take the load off of you. And it's to let the oppressed go, go free. Number six, it let the oppressed go free. Number seven, it breaks every yoke. Oh, yeah, there's power in the name of Jesus. We sing that song. But let me tell you something. There's power in fasting. Fasting will break the yoke off of your body, off of your spirit, and off of your soul. It will break every single yoke. Fasting calls us to give bread to the, those who are hungry. Cause us to, number, that's number, number eight. And, and finally, number nine, fasting causes us to clothe those who are naked. Those things that fasten. Faster, I didn't know that fasting does all those things. Listen, when you begin to fast, when we all begin to fast, when we all begin to fast, heaven begin to respond. When we all begin to fast, God begins to respond. God said, after you have done this, I will respond. In verse 8 of Joshua that we read, Joshua, the, 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 the Bible says that God said, your light shall break forth as the morning. Your health shall spring forth speedily. God is going to improve your health. Your righteousness shall go forth before thee. And the Bible says the glory of the Lord shall be your reward. The re reward is not so much things. But I'd rather have the glory of the Lord than anything else. It's time for us to use our weapon. It's time for us to use our weapons. Let me say it again. It's time for us to use our weapons. It's time for us to go into a form of consecration. Somebody needs to consecrate. Things fall apart in our lives, but we need to consecrate. The word consecrate, it's a Hebrew word I'm about to wrap up. It's a Hebrew word that means, it, it means uh, it's a Hebrew word rather called kadash. And in that word, kadash means to consecrate. It means to set apart, set aside, dedicate, sanctify, devote, 
sacred, and to be holy. God wants us to be set apart for him. He wants us for him. Consecrate. Kadash. Set aside ourselves for him. Why? So that we can hear him. So that we can attend to the will of God. Is it possible that we're not using our weapons? I want to use my weapon. For these weapons are not carnal but mighty through God through the pulling down of stronghold. The Bible says that the demons were in this young man in Matthew. And when Jesus came on the scene, the father of the young man said, Jesus, please help my son because he's a lunatic. Falls in the fire. Scratch himself. But your disciples, the church, could not do anything at all. Jesus got upset. He said, you're a generation of unbelievers. And you know what Jesus did? He went to work. He healed the young man. And as he healed the young man, the Bible says his disciples looked and they marveled. They looked marveled at Jesus and said, how can this happen? How did you do this, Jesus? And the Lord said, Jesus said, how be it that this kind goeth forth but by prayer and fasting? What am I saying? Listen. The only way that certain things can be managed in our lives, the only way that we can live and have sustainable by God. We want victory, but we don't want to do the things that will sustain that victory. The only way we can sustain that victory in our lives is through the auspices of the word of prayer and of fasting. Are you ready? Are you ready to deploy these weapons? Are, 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 are you ready to? I know some of us are in some precarious situation right now. Some challenge in our lives. I could have really come and and preach all the blessings that God has for us. But I hear the Lord saying, tell them to equip themselves. Use their weapons. Use your weapons. What have I been, man, let me just close this. What have I been trying to convey to you for the past three weeks? Use your weapons that God has given us. Use your word. Read your word. Study your word. Pray. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, pray and seek his face. Men must always pray and not faint. Men must always pray. Jesus calls us to be prayer warriors. He called us to be prayer warriors. I hope you can hear me where you are. He called us so that we can use those weapons. I encourage you today to use your weapons. It didn't come to bring you down. didn't come to judge you. But I came to encourage you to say pray. Somebody needs to read their word. Somebody needs to fast. Somebody needs to do all three. Somebody needs that help from God. 
the help from God. He's the only help that we know. The enemy wants to take, us, take some of us out in this time of COVID. Confusion in the atmosphere. Confusion in the home. Can't think. Can't get everything together. But I want you to know today that there is help. I want you to know that God has equipped us. And regardless of how we feel of what things may look like, my God, somebody is about to pray. Somebody. Somebody's waking up. Somebody's soul and spirit is waking up. You're about to pray. Somebody's about to open the word of God. Somebody's about to return back to the word. It's time for us to return back to that word. Somebody is about to study the word again, is about to encourage themselves in the word. And somebody's about to fast. It's time for us. As this world changes, as some of us head back to in-person worship at our different churches as some of us try to pull it all together it's time for us to prepare ourselves arm ourselves use your weapon use your weapon if you don't remember anything I have said in the past three weeks please remember these words Use your weapon. Use the word. Use your prayer. And use your weapon of fasting. Father, we thank you right now for these weapons that you have given us. These weapons, Lord God, they're not fleshly. They're not carnal. They're not of the world. But these are spiritual weapons that you have given us. And God, over time, the enemy, we have been allowing him to cause us to forget about the power of these weapons. But today, today, Lord, we have made up in our minds that we will use the word. We will use our prayers. We will fast God we will fast according to your will that we will Lord God recover and we will overcome in the name of Jesus because we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony Lord somebody is going to testify of what the word has done for them somebody going to testify of their prayer life somebody's Fast and discipline. God is about to increase in the name of Jesus. Lord God, let there be strength. Let there be breakthrough. And let there be a spiritual release in the hearts and in the minds of your people. We thank you for doing it now in the name of Jesus. Strengthen my sister, Lord, right now. Strengthen my brother right now. God, somebody really need, Lord God, help in the area of fasting, Lord. I pray right now, God, that they will begin to receive boldness like the apostles. Boldness like Daniel in the name of Jesus. And boldness as Jesus that fasted 40 days. I pray right now that somebody, Lord God, will turn their plates down Monday, Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday, or Sunday, Lord God. Somebody going to fast one day. Somebody going to fast two. Somebody decide they're going to go on five days. God, in the name of Jesus, somebody will receive their healing. Healing is coming through fasting. Breakthrough coming through fasting. Deliverance is coming through fasting. 
in the name of Jesus. We thank you for doing it now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for your strength, and we thank you for your direction in Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of our Lord. Amen. Some announcements is coming. Amen. We encourage you to continue giving. Amen. To the ministry, we encourage you to continue praying for the ministry. Amen. And we encourage you to keep in line and in tune with our ministry as we begin to prepare ourselves to come back on September 6th. Amen. God bless you so much in Jesus' name. Just remember, these weapons, the word, fasting, and prayer are our weapons of mass destruction. God bless you in Jesus' name.